I've watched the show for a long time now, and uh, something, Tracy, that seems to uh, come up over and over again is someone will start talking about the soul and or spirituality. Mm -hmm. You'll ask them to define it, mm -hmm. and they'll ha you'll have a long conversation, and eventually they'll say something like, uh, God is love, or the soul is, sure. is just is, right? So I thought about that for a long time, and uh, full disclosure, I'm an atheist, mm -hmm. uh, but I thought about that for a long time and wanted to come up with a definition of a soul and spirituality for you that hopefully you can understand and, and uh, you know, uh, feel satisfied with. But I, I doubt anyone... Uh, I guess my question, let, let me ask, a, I was going to say, let me ask a question first, because, I mean, before we get going... I could define mm -hmm. a soul as like this, this uh, you know, as Muhammad here. And I, I could say, okay, there's the soul. But it, if, 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 if this isn't what other people are trying to communicate, it wouldn't be useful to me. I, I, I think it is what people are trying to communicate. How would he know uh, that? Because they're not here say. to agree or disagree. But, but please go ahead. Let, let me go ahead and right. let you do your definition. Let's hear it. Yeah. So, so yeah. And, and so this is a, a hard thing to do is say, you know, I don't think that this is going to be a definition that somebody who believes in a soul would say is correct, but I think it does capture what they are feeling. All right. So you're, you're so, kind so of giving your interpretation of what might really be going on with what they're struggling to describe. Yes. Okay. So, Basically, it started with, I studied computer science, and something I found really interesting studying that uh, was that the, the fundamentals of all computers, how they all work, is just three pieces of logic uh, that I'm not going to go very deep into, just to say that you, you have this logical conception of and, or, and not. And between those three logical concepts, that's how you can build the fundamental hardware of all computers. Okay. And so it made me think about what's the analog in humans? Do we have some sort of similar logical conception? Uh, and, and I came to the conclusion that it, the base level could not be logical because logic came much later in the evolutionary process. So I was thinking about, okay, well, what's the irreducible fundamental part of our experience? And philosophically, you get to qualia, which is notoriously hard to define beyond the, the stuff of our experience, right? So basically, the idea here is that you have uh, just basically one type of thing that's the fundamental unit of qualia for humans. Uh, and, and I'm just going to call it feelings, and that's going to encompass external sensory information. Um, for example, if you touch something, like if you touch the desk in front of you, you're feeling it with your hands, right? But I would also use the term feeling to describe the light that comes into your eye is being felt by the back of your eye and being turned into the sensation. Um, and then, you know, similar feeling, um, but more internally is feelings like hunger that are, you know, your body trying to tell you something, but they manifest in a way that is not directly describable. And then finally, you have uh, your emotional feelings, something like happiness and sadness, which are even harder to describe and even harder to convince someone that you are really experiencing it today. And so with these ideas in mind, I would say that what people claim is the soul is really just the part of your brain that isn't generating conscious thought and conscious experience. And so that, that might be, you know, most of the brain, I'm not a neuroscientist, I can't give you a, a hard percentage of what that would be, but I think it's suffice to say that there is a much older part of the brain that is most of the brain that does a lot of thinking and a lot of information processing that we as conscious entities don't get direct experience with most of the time, except for, say, strange meditation states or weird psychedelics or something like that. Um, well, let me just stop you for a minute, um, because I may, mm -hmm. it, it may not be necessary to go on, um, because I, I, 
While I'm not sure whether or not any individual who is describing a soul may, you know, would, would concur with what you're describing, mm-hmm. um, Jung, for example, felt that the, the subconscious drove belief in God because the, the, the human being, via their experience, was like, where do these things come from? Right. Where do my feelings mm-hmm. come from? Where do my so in the days before, you know, we could map your brain, look at things from a more neurological perspective. Uh, we had this sort of right. mis- mystery behind. I mean, there were some observable things that you could draw assumptions from. Like you always still had the issue of brain damage, where you could see what would happen to a person if their brain was damaged, and you could mm-hmm. infer, confer some things from that, or infer some things from that. But the the fact is. Um, people, he felt that from a psychological standpoint, people were sort of confused about what was driving these things. And when I talk to theists, it, it, I understand why he mm-hmm. would draw that conclusion because many of them will associate the existence of God with feelings. Okay, so they will say, like, I had this mm-hmm. feeling. And they start really getting into that area that you're talking about of, like, I felt this. Yeah. I had this connection, this, this like, emotional sort of physical feeling, this, this experience that was so unique and so uh, intense mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. That's, that's why I believe in a God now, because where did this come from? And it's sort of inconceivable to them that these things come from yourself. Like that's not yeah. something that they are even willing to entertain in, in a lot of cases. And the other mm-hmm. issue is, um, uh, gosh, I'm trying to remember. I, I can't remember, but that that was that was one of the things where uh, people I've heard people associate these things with God, right? To say that God is causing this experience, yeah. or God is God is, is this is this is God talking to me. Now, whether or not they're right. viewing that additionally as a conduit, right? Like like that that is the sole part of me that <laughs> integrates mm-hmm. with God. I don't really yeah, know, that works either. <laughs> but but the other oh gosh, I keep having these flashes of you know the the other issue life being alive. Mm-hmm. There are people who actually associate it, um, like the, the the interpretation of the of the term soul uh, comes from actually a word that is about life and being alive, things that are alive, mm-hmm. right? And so you have this idea of of a thing that lives, it lives in it, and, and you breathe life into something, so it's breath, right? So you've got the breath and the thing mm-hmm. is living. Um, and if, in fact, I think that is the literal thing, is, is more breath. But uh, the idea is it's alive and breathing, <laughs> and so that's the soul. And it mm-hmm. was a way of differentiating animate things from inanimate things. Things that were alive, right, in the Bible, were things with a soul. Mm-hmm. And things that weren't alive were things that had no soul. Um, but the soul, yeah. the model of the soul was very different, right? The model of the afterlife was very different. Like what we have today in Christianity mm-hmm. is completely different models than what they used in the Old Testament. And right. so you have this kind of thing too where there are some people who want to say that somehow being alive is, uh, you know, that, that experience of living is somehow associated. Mm-hmm. And again, they tend to, when I talk to them, associate that more with God. When I get into the soul situation, I do get the, the weirder answers like you're describing where somebody will say mm-hmm. um, just strange things that, that are almost contradictory sometimes where I'll be like, that doesn't even make sense. But uh, mm-hmm. I have heard them associate these things with God, whether or not this is what they're trying to describe as a soul or how much that would feed into it, I really don't know. It's not that I don't hear what you're saying, I just don't know if that's really mm-hmm. what they mean or not, but it certainly is uh, tied to conversations around what people would describe as a religious experience. In the conversations that I've had, yeah. I would almost say, I, I think that what it is, is is kind of the opposite of what you're saying because the, the way that, that the conversations I've had generally go is what I'm hearing people describing as their soul is their conscious experience because they say like, well, that's what separates us from the mm-hmm. animals is our, our feelings and our morality and our logic and our, able to, our, our ability to think, uh, our like personal agency. And so... Mm-hmm. If we're trying to analyze what's in somebody head, somebody's head, which is a dangerous thing to do, but I mean, if we're just trying to think of this on a philosophical level and trying to think like, what are they actually talking about? What I generally associate it with, just based on the conversations that I've had, is that people are talking about their conscious experience as the differentiator between me and a, a dog or a cat or something along those lines. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and I think in that in that model, if they say that the soul is consciousness, then I would say that the God they claim to communicate with would then be that older part of the brain that does a lot of processing that we don't really understand. That would make um, a lot of sense and to then me. Just, yeah, and so, and so, yeah, this, this 
whole idea was just motivated by listening to people talking about this intense feeling and coming from the perspective that they aren't lying that they're having this feeling, that they're really being mm-hmm. honest about what they're feeling and what they're experiencing and that they're having a hard time clearly making sense of it. And so I wanted to try and make some sense of it from my point of view as you know, an atheist and materialist. And just to wrap it up really quickly, um, the definition of spirituality that I would give is an, instead of saying that it's love or some fuzzy thing, it's the communication of the conscious part of your brain and the unconscious part of your brain is what I would call spirituality is that, that actual communication because your brain does communicate that way. Yeah. I mean, thinking from that point of view, that makes sense to me. Yeah. I mean, we were talking earlier about how there's um, definitions of spirituality that have been thrown out for use in the medical community that have to do with just the, mm-hmm. the, the reality of people being social creatures. It was that are said social. That they, they, they use soccer as a spiritual yeah, practice. Yeah, they, they had soccer <laughs> yeah. listed as a spiritual practice, right? That. Uh, Huh. That because it's because it's an interaction between people. That is the that is that is what they were defining as special as uh, spirituality was that the interconnectedness of people. So it, it's really you know what people are mean by it is it's going to be an incredibly unique thing. It's not that I think that there's no value yeah. in trying to you know help figure out what they're saying. But I in these cases I feel so bereft of understanding what they mean, because when I looked through the things that I was defining in a religious context and came to the conclusion that, wow, these things just don't even exist, and I, you know, I, I was just making up things that weren't there, right? And mm-hmm. so I had to kind of let go of that stuff, but what, but I, but I don't, what I learned early on was that what other people meant by it wasn't what I had meant by it or what I had intended by those terms. And so I had to kind of let mm-hmm. go of that and let people define it for themselves. That's just a, especially a thing like what you're describing where they can't really show it to me. They can't take it out and show it. So they have to describe what it is they're saying. And sometimes I'm good. I mean, there are people that have described feelings to me or experiences to me that I may not share but I can still say, okay, mm-hmm. I understand what you're describing, right? I get what you're what you're describing, even though I've never had that experience myself. I still understand you because it relates to things that I do understand. But when it comes to these discussions, mm-hmm. a lot of times they're trying to relate to things. When they do relate to something I understand, then it becomes really mundane. And when I say, okay, so is this what you're describing? Yeah. They say no. And then I'm like, well, then I don't understand. <laughs> it's, it's love, but not the love that you understand love as. And it's like, well, then how does that help? Right. Uh, but I mean, it, I, I do appreciate the call. Um, I don't know if this is what people mean or not. I understand why you would think these things are certainly related to religious mm-hmm. discussion. Uh, and that's about all I really can say about it. Okay. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, thanks. Yeah. Um, if I can just say one more thing, 10 seconds. Sure. Um, the idea that I came up with uh, of explaining our consciousness without, um, you know, going metaphysical or claiming there's a soul is uh, just relating to the idea again that if the base thing, the base type of thing in our head is a feeling uh, for our conscious experience, then I would define our conscious experience as feeling the feeling of feeling feelings. I have no argument with that. (laughs) (laughs) I I tend to think I'm a robot and I'm not like other people and they're having some experience that I don't understand. I'm like, I'm processing stuff, how I process stuff. And maybe other people have a different experience of that. But, uh, yeah, okay, but so a hard problem. I appreciate your call. Thank you for calling in. All right, yeah, thanks so much for you. taking my call. Okay, bye. All right, thank you. Bye.